let's begin <laughs> so hi i'm pretty pleased singapore's top politically correct person that's not true y'all follow my instagram you know that's a lie <laughs> what's true is i have dr paul tambaya right in front of me right now and we're gonna ask him a couple of questions that you guys have sent in on instagram nobody asked nobody asked literally nobody asked them this is gonna happen right before your walkabout here at Baja. So we are in the Bukit Batang SMC, okay? So thanks for doing this. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. And I guess my, my first question to you, for you is, what's your relationship with this constituency? Okay, you know, um, since 2011, I've actually been volunteering with uh, SDP. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've primarily um, been walking the ground in Holland Bukit Timah. I'll be honest about that, <laughs> okay? But you know, the, the thing about the constituencies in Singapore is that it's super weird is that Holland Bukit Timah and Bukit Panjang mm -hmm. are essentially the same in, yeah. in the northern part. So yeah. the, the boundary line between Holland Bukit Timah and Bukit Panjang actually bisects Gansa Road. Mm. So there's some blocks which are Holland Bukit Timah and some blocks which are Bukit Panjang. Yeah. So without realising, I think I bought Bukit Panjang before. <laughs> you know, right? I just yeah. cross over the block and then we go and say, again to people, yeah. and say, hey, uh, oh, I'm Bukit Panjang. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm quite familiar with that. As a mm. kid growing up though, um, I had cousins who lived in Bukit Panjang, mm. but Bukit Panjang looked nothing like this. Okay? <laughs> and the thing I remember is they had a lot of trees. They had mm. rambutan trees, yeah. they had durian trees, mm -hmm. and, you know, we used to come and play, climb the trees, and yeah. things like that. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. A, dating myself. Okay? <laughs> but yeah. but I, I know what you mean, because yesterday yeah. I was at Holland Village, right. and at Holland Village, like yeah. we were walking to like, and just at the back of Holland Village, we the Sunday folks just right, have ice yeah, cream, yeah. and that is Tamil Baga GRC. I know, it's And so then weird. we were just yeah. like, wait, what? This is literally Holland Village. Yeah. So it was, it's very confusing. It is totally yeah. confusing. It's like I tell people, my mom has lived in the same house for 45 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. but she's trained from Kreta Air Tanglin <laughs> to Mumeng Kalang to <laughs> Tanjung Paga, and now she's Holland Bukit Timah. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's totally insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no logic whatsoever. So, yeah. so in Bukit Panjang, what is yeah. one must-try food place people have to go to? Okay, now you know my, my, my favorite food is biryani. Mm. Okay, and people get very emotional about biryani. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and, and you know it, it can actually lead to um, to serious crime in Singapore. So so I'm not going to take sides. Okay? That is true. It's very. I, I'm going to give you the super politically correct mm. answer. Okay. Which is all the biryani in Bukit Panjang is great. Okay, <laughs> I, I believe I'm going to try one day. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll put it to that. So could you also tell us a little bit more about what you do at NUS and okay. ISID? Somebody's drilling in the background. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so in uh, in NUS, I'm a professor of medicine, mm -hmm. um, and what that really means is uh, I spend most of my time looking after patients, mm -hmm. uh, but my promotion depends on my research, and my bonus depends on the student evaluation. So I've kind of got to do everything, <laughs> which is good for me because I have a relatively short attention span. <laughs> so if I get bored with research, I you know go and do some teaching. If I get bored with teaching, I can go and see some patients. Mm -hmm. So so that works quite well. So kind of like doing a little bit of everything, yeah, which is which is not bad. Um, the ISID thing is interesting mm -hmm. because currently I'm the publications chair. Mm. So what that means is uh, I'm in charge of the journal, yeah. um, and we also publish a textbook mm -hmm. of infection control. Okay. So in actual fact, I think uh, I do more work than the president. <laughs> so, so so when I become the president, <laughs> and some of you know that from your CCA, right? Mm. The guy who's in charge of the, yeah. the the magazine ends up doing more work than the president. They're doing the most. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, because it's no joke. <laughs> I mean, we have a paid editor and things like that, mm -hmm. but you still got to look through and make sure everything is in line and choose the right articles and stuff like that. Yeah. So so actually, I I put out like an IGQ and A asking sure. people like, what do you want to ask Dr. Paul? Okay. And quite a lot of people have asked about the COVID nineteen pandemic sure. specifically. Yeah. So the main question that has been asked quite Quite a, quite a bit yeah. was how do you think Singapore could have handled the migrant the migrant worker dormitory outbreak better? Yeah, so you know what I think we could have done is do um, is do in March what we did in January and February. Mm -hmm. See, in January and February, we, we handled the outbreak really well. Mm -hmm. um, and it wasn't just because there were no migrant workers. Because in fact, there were five Bangladeshi migrant workers at the Salita Aerospace uh, construction site which were infected in February. Mm -hmm. and, and what we did with them was really good. You know, we admitted them to hospital, we identified their contacts, we did contact tracing, uh, we quarantined them, we tested them, and we made sure that the outbreak stopped. And, and it did stop. After five, uh, there were no more cases after the first five. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, um, what? What are your thoughts on how rushed this election is and this the current yeah, election? I mean, I think it's crazy. Yeah, same. You know, it is super reckless yeah. and it's opportunistic. You know, uh, I just heard on the radio coming out there are 20 community cases today, which is uh, which is a lot, and it's it's more than we've had before. Um, but you know, it's kind of opportunistic because in elections, people flee to safety. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, the, the best success of the PAP in the last 30 years was uh, 2001. It was soon after 9-11, mm. you know, and everybody was very afraid uh, that there was going to be this massive terrorist thing and, you know, it would be a total disaster. Mm. Uh, and they called an election. Yes. And they won big. Yeah. <laughs> and the opposition was nearly wiped out. Mm. Uh, and unfortunately, I think that's why they did it this time. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like people, like a lot of people feel like the situation is kind of managed for now, so it's a good time to like, Hurry up and do this and get the votes, which I, I think is I don't think so. I mean, yeah. the, there's the medical situation mm. and there's the economic situation. Yeah. You know, it's my mom's birthday last night. So I took her to a restaurant, mm -hmm. you know, um, and uh, it was a restaurant in a hotel. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been there many times. It's, it's quite accessible by wheelchair and things like that. Mm. But we were the only people in the restaurant. Mm. <laughs> you know, it was really yeah. sad. And I was talking to the, the chief waiter. I said, how long are you guys going to be able to survive? Yeah. He said, well, I was paid this month. The next month, I'm not so sure. They, yeah. they may have to go on no pay leave and things like that. Mm -hmm. So for the economy, uh, we're nowhere near stable. Yeah. Oh, so I think mean, not a great time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't think for it's us, it's a great time yeah. for them. Yeah. yeah. And and I'm so afraid. Yeah. Like after Friday, it's yeah. going to be like a, uh, like a, yeah. a, a big outbreak again. Like it's yeah. it's really intense right now. And I mean, I guess like because of all oh, so many years of experience being a doctor, yeah. what inspired you to become a doctor, and how was your journey as an infectious disease like, expert? Okay. Well, you know. Um, my father was a doctor. He was a diabetes specialist. He was very well regarded. He was very compassionate. And, you know, every kid looks up to their dad. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it wasn't until later on, I guess, when I went to school that I, I really got into the sciences. But I also liked uh, uh, history. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and medicine has got sort of a mix of the, uh, the, the art and the science. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I know that because I, I work with people who do mathematical modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not scared of math. But I invited this guy who was uh, one of the world experts in mathematical modeling mm -hmm. to, to give a talk to our infectious disease group. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, whatever you do, don't write any formulas of the <laughs> and, and true enough, he went and put a formula out and then people started leaving the Oh group. man, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how yes. you stop a rat from blissing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the reason why people go into medicine, because they don't like maths. <laughs> if they like maths, they go into computer science or engineering or something like that. Yeah. Now the infectious disease part is also an interesting story mm -hmm. because um, after I finished my army, my uh, first posting was in cardiology uh, and the cardiologist, uh, he's Professor Morris Chu, he runs uh, Farrow Park Hospital uh, and he seemed to like me and he said, hey, why don't you do cardiology as a career? Then I said to him, well, you know, there are too few diagnoses. You can either have a heart attack, you have heart failure or you have a heart rhythm problem. Yeah. He said, nothing else. And his junior said to me, he said, yeah, and we managed to miss a few of them. Mm. Then he was trying to be funny and he mm. said, well, you should do infectious disease. He said, there are thousands of diagnoses. You could have a virus, you could have a bacteria, yeah. you could have a parasite. Yeah. And he was trying to be funny. But mm -hmm. when I went home and thought about it, I said, hey, he's right. You know? <laughs> and that kind of suits me. I like mm. the, the kind of different different kinds of things, yeah. doing different kinds of things at different times. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I went into infectious disease. Oh yeah, that, that's that's funny. That like a joke turned out to be like the yeah, actual like a, a career point. Defining yeah. point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess another question that I got quite quite a bit mm -hmm. was, do you think after the after polling day, they might there might be another circuit breaker? Yeah, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You know, and what they can do is they can do targeted interventions mm -hmm. because um, you know they're opening up uh, USS and uh, yeah. um, some of the bars. Uh, bars I don't know, but you know they've already opened up the restaurants yeah. and they're going to try and relax some of that and some of the religious events. So so they can target specific things. If you start getting outbreaks in bars, they can close bars. Mm -hmm. If you start getting an outbreak in USS, they can close USS. Yeah. So so I don't think they're going to shut down the whole city. That's a bit reassuring for yes, a lot of yes, us yeah, out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any advice out there for anyone who aspires to work in healthcare? So, not specifically right. being a doctor and nurse, yeah. but healthcare in general. Well, let me tell you, the, the most important thing for people who want to work in healthcare uh, is that you like people. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people, you know, they, they are really brilliant, uh, but they can't handle people. Mm -hmm. See, and, and these are the people we we try and channel to um, certain parts of healthcare where you don't need to handle people. <laughs> you see, like, like for example, uh, some of my best friends are pathologists. Mm. Okay, but these people prefer talking to dead people <laughs> than, to, than to live people. You see, seriously. Yeah. And, and they're smart. They're super smart. Mm. This guy is really, really smart. You know, he's a he's a great artist. He can draw mm. draw stuff. So he, he really appreciates. Uh, he can make a diagnosis. He's like these CSI guys. You know, mm. yeah. you have dead body. Then you yeah. look, 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 draws, and then he gets things out. Yeah. yeah. So I I think you know what's really important is you do something that fits your personality mm. and your talent. That's true. Yeah, I feel like I watch enough Grey's Anatomy to know you have to be a people person. That's right. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I guess back. To or you could be a surgeon or an anesthetist. You put people to sleep. That's true because yeah. you don't like people that much. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, don't, don't go into that. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so I guess back to back to politics for now. So who has been someone who has been the most underrated or influential person you you respect in politics? Well, it can be from anybody. Well, you know the reason why I joined the Singapore Democratic Party mm-hmm. is primarily because of ideology. Mm-hmm. You see, they're they're kind of left of center. They're social social justice, social democratic. But you know, after getting into the party, everyone says, "Why do you join the party with the crazy men?" She's in charge. <laughs> And, and even my mom says that sometimes, but um, but you know he's actually inspirational, and uh, the fact that he's gone through all of what that he's gone through is really really something very unique for a Singapore politician, actually for a politician anywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah I met Doctor Chi this morning. I, okay. I spoke to him as well, oh, cool. and yeah. it was amazing meeting him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doctor Chi smiled so much that yeah, I don't think people so. will believe me, so I can't yeah. wait to put the video out so you can see for yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, another really important question that I want to ask you is, we know the elections has put a lot of pressure on the candidates, so right. what have you been doing to take care of your mental health? Yeah, well, you know, one of the things I did was I took a break on uh, Sunday afternoon. Mm. Uh, and I, I do that, I've done that, you know, in stressful times at work and yeah. things like that. And uh, I, I find that it, it's very helpful. You know, just take a break, don't do anything about the elections, or about work or anything like that. Just mm. chill out uh, and then you know, put a pause button. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes we go, the, the lines are very blurred, especially now sure. that a lot of us are working from, from home. home. Oh, yeah. This yeah. Is so, like, yeah. you need to set off a cut off time, you need yeah. to take care of yourself. Okay. Don't no, don't reply okay. to work emails. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's great advice. And now, I guess, some light hearted questions yeah. we got from Instagram. Uh-huh. How are you always so calm and collected? <laughs> okay. Well, if you ask my wife, she's going to disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> she says I get agitated with her all the time. It's not true, it's only on occasion. But, but frankly, you see, I think that um, I've learned over time. That if you are calm and collected, uh, you know you can twist the knife slowly to someone's back, <laughs> you see, without trying to 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 sort of tear them apart. Mm. Because if you get agitated, people get agitated back at you, mm. and you never achieve anything. Yeah. Whereas if you're calm and collected, in fact, um, you know one of my, one of the most inspirational times of this is a really bad example. Was Bill Clinton in 1996 mm. when he was giving his State of the Union address? I was in the U.S. doing my postgraduate study. Mm. And the guy was at rock bottom, and he was about to be impeached. Mm. He had behaved really badly in the scandal. And, and he got these people eating out of his hand, you know, the, because he was just such a smooth guy. Yeah. You know, so, so, I mean, apart from the bad behavior, of that, mm. you know, the smoothness is something which I think uh, helps you to win over people. Yeah, I guess, I guess the phrase kill him with kindness yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> comes to mind. <laughs> Yeah, so next question is, what is your favorite homemade Indian food? It's not I really want to know. Biryani again. That's true. <laughs> so, biryani, so, so, in fact, so, homemade so, biryani is better than the, the store-bought biryani. Yeah, shout out to my mom if you're watching this. Yeah. Probably not, but you make yeah. the best biryani to me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. someone also asked on Instagram, are you taking in any new PhD students? Okay, this is, um, I am actually, because oh. my I, I'm down to one PhD student and she's okay. going to graduate soon. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm sitting on uh, three chapters of the PhD thesis. <laughs> so so uh, if, you're, if you're watching, uh, I'm <laughs> Working oh, no. on it on the actually on cooling off day, I'm going to go through those three. Perfect chapters, time. I promise you. <laughs> uh, but the, actually, the person I'm looking for right now is somebody who's got a bit of lab experience, but who mm. also wants to do some clinical work. Mm. Okay. And uh, um, I actually have a younger uh, academic who's going to co-supervise because mm. you know we promised that we're going to spend 80, 90 percent of our time here. Yeah. So uh, I'm not going to abandon my PhD student. <laughs> so so sure very reassured. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 So the next question is actually, what kind of books do you read, and do you have any book recommendations? Okay. Uh, like I said, I'm a history buff. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm reading this book. Um, what's it called? It's about uh, animals in Singapore. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really really cool. Because you know there were no tigers in Singapore until people came here, mm-hmm. and then when, when it became more populated, yeah. then the small animals came here, mm-hmm. and then the tigers swam across because then they could they could eat goats yeah. and stuff Food. like that. Yeah. You see? yeah. So, so it's it's really quite fascinating how the, the whole story uh, emerged, and then the whole story about dogs. You know, there were people who used to just go and shoot dogs in Singapore, mm-hmm. and uh, because they thought that the dogs spread rabies, which they yeah. did. Mm-hmm. But that rabies did. was eliminated in 1930, mm-hmm. 31 in Singapore, and uh, but they got into trouble because these people who were shooting dogs were not just shooting the stray dogs; they were shooting mm-hmm. the, the pedigree dogs oh, of, the, <laughs> of the, the colonial officers. Yeah. So it's a huge tension, but it's an interesting story. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never thought about animals in Singapore back then. Yeah, that would yeah. be an interesting read. It, it, it is. Yeah. yeah. So my next question is actually, um, what's happening in the news right now? So with right. everything that happened in Raisa Khan yesterday right. from Lucas Party, uh, with regards to all the, the two police reports lodged against her, sure. what are some, what's some advice you might have for Raisa? Yeah, you know, um, when I first got involved in politics, um, what I do was everything I was going to say, uh, I showed it to my wife. And then she said, this is going to get you in trouble. Mm. And I said, okay, change that. 
I, I still want to say the same thing. Yeah. But there's sometimes a, a way of saying it that if you don't get they a police report, way, right? it's like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So this thing evolves over time, and I'm sure she will. Yeah. You know, uh, it's just a matter of time, matter of experience, uh, finding out what are the what are the buttons that are gonna really uh, annoy people. Yeah. yeah. I think I think for me personally, my yeah. my own experience, yeah. I I find where the line is, and yeah. I just go really close. That's right. <laughs> but I, yeah, but I know where the line is. A little bit, a little bit <laughs> yeah. Time. After yeah. my experience last year, I know. That's yes. what I do now. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. to to end this live stream, I actually want to sure. like tell you some messages that your sure. fans out there oh, you. <laughs> have sent nice. through me. Yeah. So yeah. please tell him to take care. I'm not yeah. even in his SMC, but we're yeah. really sharing his good name online. Thank you, thank you. Next, we have, I have nothing to ask, but I just want to thank him for speaking up against the, the ruling party. <laughs> Someone <laughs> said that. And next one is yeah. all capital letters. Yeah. Just a big thank you for fighting for us. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, thank oh, you. Yeah. And the last one is, please tell Dr. Paul we recognize his contributions towards science and we really appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's yeah. really <laughs> sweet. It really was. Like yeah. I was so overwhelmed. I just casually yeah. asked everyone just now and I got okay. so many responses. Yeah. So thanks so much really for nice. taking thank the time. Thanks yeah. very much. Of course. Of people like <laughs> yeah, everyone's ready to take yeah. interest with you, so I will yeah. hold you up. You. And yeah, Dr. Paul's gonna go for his walkabout now yeah. around Fajr. So if you're in the area, come down and meet Dr. Paul in four zero three. Four zero three. Four zero three, that's yeah. where we are. So yeah. all the best. This is GE twenty twenty. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> yeah.